Midlands trains operate long distance services to and from London St Pancras, along with the regional and local services that link towns and cities in the East Midlands, as well as those in Central and Northern England. This is a franchise that means different things to different people in different communities. Speak to a student in London and they'll tell you it's the train that takes them to University in Loughborough or Derby or Sheffield. They'll speak to a Beatles fan in Norwich and it's the train service that gets you to the attractions in Liverpool. In Nottingham, it's East Midlands trains that take you to Lincoln, Leicester, Cleethorpe, Skegness, London and, well, everywhere. The East Midlands franchise has worked hard over the years to get to a point where it scores highly in customer satisfaction and the franchise has a strong track record for performance. So let's find out a bit more. The franchise operates 89 stations and over 2,000 employees are the glue that holds it all together. As to its train fleet, intercity services are led by high-speed Meridian diesel electric trains in five and seven car sets. Extra capacity on long distance routes is provided by running pairs of five car sets coupled together. The franchise also runs a fleet of Intercity 125s on its mainline routes from London to Pancras. And for regional and local services, the mainstays are the Super Sprinters and Express Sprinters. There has been significant investment in the franchise. In 2013, a 125 mile an hour upgrade on the Midland Line resulted in faster trains between Nottingham and Sheffield. And in 2015, the Secretary of State confirmed that the plans to electrify this key route would go ahead alongside works to remove some of the key bottlenecks up and down the line. Between now and March 2018, the incumbent franchisee will deliver a host of improvements for its passengers. A £13 million investment will deliver extra capacity through extra services. New timetabling means faster journeys on some routes. Departures from London have increased from four to five in off-peak hours, offering more opportunities for travel to the franchise's passengers. More automatic ticket machines are being installed and better customer information provided across the network, with more information screens installed at key stations and a new mobile app, which will allow ticket purchases, making it easier for passengers. Accessibility is also being improved, along with 29 new accessible help points at unstaffed stations, linked to a 24-hour customer contact centre. There'll be an improved online compensation system for passengers who are delayed. And there's the promise of free onboard 4G Wi-Fi for all passengers on its London services by 2018, as well as an improved catering offer and better train cleanliness all of which will help make journeys on the franchise better for passengers. We've already seen major improvements to the infrastructure with around £150 million invested in Nottingham's rail network, including the redevelopment of the city's beautiful Grade 2 listed station. But what else could be improved? As well as continuing to provide a great service for passengers and building on the work already done, the department would like to see the franchise make a greater socio-economic contribution to the regions it serves. We want the new franchisee to have even greater engagement with key stakeholders. That ranges from local authorities and community rail projects to other train operating companies and network rail to help fully understand their aspirations and concerns so that better services can be delivered as a result. The rail sustainability principles will be key to the bid specification and whoever the successful bidder is, they must collaborate with others to continue to improve the experience of passengers and maintain safety for them and rail workers. The franchisee will not only have to deliver the passenger capacity needed to make the forecast growth in demand, but also work with the freight operators to make sure they can meet the demands of a growing sector. There are capacity constraints affecting performance on the London to Bedford stretch, as well as on the Trent junctions to Nottingham section. And in the Leicester area, there are conflicts between passenger and freight flows, which the new operator will need to address. The successful bidder will have to show tangible commitment to innovation in both the management and future development of the business. It's not a question of simply repeating what's gone before, but looking for ways to make improvements across the business. Bids will also need to demonstrate creative solutions to future rolling stock challenges, 
particularly with regard to the forthcoming electrification programme, making sure that passengers get the high standards that they deserve in a modern railway. There are a lot of good things happening for this franchise. The winning bidder will be the one who recognises there is no time to rest on the laurels of past achievement, but rather to show how they will keep making things better for their passengers.